So, aloha no kako. I'm Malia Nobrega Oliveira. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, and when I stop sharing, you can see our maka a little bit more up close. Um, so, aloha no and aloha to even Alaska and Navajo Nation for joining us as well. Um, I'm Malia Nobrega Oliveira and on behalf of the University of Hawaii at Manoa, Hawaii Nuiakea, the School of Hawaiian Knowledge. Um, we're really excited to um, be one of our hosts here on Lei Anue Nui. And of course, we, we are happy to partner with Kanayo Kana, a Kula Hawaii network, um, and many of our other partners. You know, when we go live on our Kanayo Kana Facebook page, we're also um, going live on Hawaii Nui Akea as well as Office of Hawaiian Affairs, OEV TV, Mana Maoli, Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, and so many others. So we're just really thankful that everyone is collaborating and being able to share this content of cultural programming um, with all of our, our ohana, our lahui, our keiki, our ohana, um, and again, you know, Hawaii Nui Akea is made up of Kamaka Kuo Kalani, the Center for Hawaiian Studies. Uh, we also have Kawai Hue Lani, the Center for Hawaiian Language. Kapapalo'i Okanewai, which is our cultural garden, or many of us know it as our lo'i, and really a pu'uhonua, where we all love to gather and build relationships. Um, and then also Native Hawaiian Student Services, and so, you know, we'll be sharing some of this contact information. If you're wanting to learn more about Hawaii Nui Akea, there's always that opportunity um, to ho'onui ike and to learn more about our ancestral knowledge. And, you know, and that's, uh, and we have a great example of that, a kumu that has been teaching for many, many years. And many of you that are tuning in have probably sat in her classes or maybe her workshops. Um, and she, she is a firm believer of ancestral knowledge and sharing that to the next generation like she does now with her mo'opuna. And I love hearing those mo'olelo of how she, um, she brings it and feeds it into not just her mo'opuna, but the mo'opuna of the Kayaulu and of the Lahui. So, aloha no e lilikala. I'll ask to unmute you now and welcome you to ho give us a ho'olauna. Aloha. Aloha, aloha Malia, aloha kako, inapo e apau, um, ki ia kiwi, he, he mea, he mea ho no u. Uh, you know, this is a new thing for me, and I thank you, Malia, for um, being persistent to say, hey, come and give a talk. <laughs> because I was really enjoying watching all the talks. <laughs> but I wanted to say aloha to everyone who is watching. I know a lot of my cousins came online, and a lot of friends, and then we also have um, from the Kupuna or Play uh, Papahi Okaku. We have uh, I know that they're online as well. Some of them are no longer in Hawaii; they're in different parts of the world. So um, I'm so glad I get to talk to them. And Malia, thank you so much for making this happen, and Mahalo Nui also to Kanayo Kana for allowing us to uh, uh, to talk to one another in this time of isolation. I call it Kiola Meha Meha, right? We're living because of the meha meha. <laughs> but it's also a good time for us to talk to one another. So, um, yeah, I, I, this is a little different from being on Zoom, but it's kind of similar. So I hope I get everything straight. <laughs> and Maria, help me out anytime. And also, if there are any questions that come up while I'm talking, just stop and ask the question, and I'd be glad to, um, glad to answer because we do have two sessions. So I, I can catch up next time if I don't finish everything this time. Great, great. So yeah, for those of you on Zoom, we do have the chat available as well as the Q&A. And then I'm also watching the Kanayo Kana Facebook chat. So, um, you know, so many are, are sharing their greetings with Kumulili Kala. And they're saying, Kumulili Kala, you're my me'e. So they're just really happy to, to have you with us. And where are you tuning in from today? Well, I'm here in my hale in He'eia in Ano'ahu. And you can see in the background, I don't know how to do background screens yet. So in the background is my library. And um, I have on the wall my uh, artwork from my Mo'opuna because um, I do a uh, class with my Mo'opuna every Sunday. Every Sunday they have, they have uh, a tutulili kla. 
And so we go through Humalipo and Hongme and Hina and all kind of things. Uh, I wanted them to learn from uh, my Kumu, Kualani Kanahele, who I'd like to send a shout out to. She told us that don't translate Akua as God, translate Akua as element. Hmm. And so I teach them all about the elements of our ancestors. And they really love learning that stuff. Stars and, and clouds and things I learned from Kalei Nuuhiba. I want to send a shout out to her too because she's so fabulous uh, bringing the ancestral knowledge to all of us today. We're always so lucky to have her. Uh, but I whatever I learn from them, I take it straight into my mo'opuna. And of course, into my classes. Uh, and I love my classes too. And aloha to all of my students. I, I'm really looking forward to... Um, teaching again this semester. I'm going to be teaching on Zoom. So if you're enrolled in my classes and don't want to be on Zoom, drop the class. I think I already have um, 55 students for the fall. And then I'm teaching also second summer session, Pana O'ahu. Hawaiian Studies 362, Pana O'ahu. Because actually, my favorite thing to do is talk to my students. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank Hawaii Nui Akea for allowing you, Malia, to be this person who helps bring all of our knowledge to the world. I love your work. I love that Hawaii Nui Akea School of Hawaii Knowledge, which Kamakuku Wala is a part, is um, wanting to support this kind of worldwide education. So um, mahalo to everybody who's making this possible. And I hope I press the right button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's get um, your screen sharing started because I know we got so much to share. Hey, do I do that or you do yes. that? You you go ahead and you start. Okay, I'm going to share. Here we go, folks. It's an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that right? Am I? Can you see my screen? Not yet. Not uh, you, on the Zoom, you click on share screen and then you bring up the product. Yeah, it's not showing. Okay, there, I guess. There it is. Uh, how's that? Can you see that now? No, not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, is that better? Yes. Yay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So you can you can see everything that can scare, the screen is big on the screen. All right, my kai. Okay, folks. This is the Mo'olelo o Haumea. I'm calling it that. Um, it's a story written by Poi Poi, but he called it Mo'olelo o Wakea, and yet everything in the story was about Haumea. So I. I changed the story title for my Mo'opuna. Uh, this is part one. So the Mo'olelo Haumea, for those of you who don't speak Hawaiian, is the story of Haumea. She is the Earth Mother. She's an Akua Vahine, or a divine female element of O'ahu. And this is a story that was written by Joseph Moku Ohai Poi Poi in 1906. So I translated it. Actually, I had my students transcribe and translate, and I've edited. We're not quite willing to publish yet, but I abridged it for my Mo'opuna because the story is 41 chapters long, and they're not going to sit through 41 chapters. <laughs> so I, I turned it into a, a shorter, maybe one or two hour start. Um, I am um, a professor and the, currently the branch chair for Comparative Polynesian Studies at the Kamakaku Okalani Center for Hawaiian Studies, which is part of the Hawaii Nuiakea School of Hawaiian Knowledge at UH Manoa. If you want to know more about what I, I do, uh, you can check out my webpage, avakonahiki.org. And I want to tell you that, um, I'll tell you more about that later. Or you can send me emails if you would like to talk about anything at lilikala at hawaii.edu. Okay, how do I make it go to the next one? Oh, I clicked on it. Is that what I do? Can you see the next one now? No, oh, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, now, this Mo'olelo is partly poi poi, but the beginning part is based on information from the Kumulipo, uh, Wa or sections 13 and, and 15, or 13 to 15, yeah, 13, 14, 15. And then, so then we get into the Haumea, Haumea Wakia, a little love story that's in poi poi. But all of this um, from poi poi has been transcribed by Dr. Noi Noi Silva. Uh, from Indigenous Politics at UH Manoa, and she let me post it on avakonahiki.org. So if, you, if you're good in reading Hawaiian, you can read everything about this story, Makolelo Hawaii, in Hawaiian, 
on avocadohuge.org, and it's all been cleaned up with the marks put in by Dr. Noy Noy Silva. Okay, I created this story that you're going to see for uh, Haena Light, Alora Estrella, and Lamapu Light. And these are my mo'opuna. Now, Alora Estrella is not my mo'opuna, but she's my good friend, Jenny Estrella's daughter, and Alora and Haena are the best friends. We used to homeschool the kids for about three years, and so they got to be really close to one another. Now, Haena and Lamaku are going to Waldorf, and Alora is going to Kamameha Maui. So she Skypes in from Maui, or now she's Zooming in from Maui. And we have class every Sunday from 10 to 12. It's my happiest time. I really, really enjoy them. They ask me the best questions I've never thought of before. Uh, so we started doing this particular story in 2015, and I changed it in 2016. And then uh, my mo'opuna started to go to uh, Anuenue Punua's program, Ko'olau Aina Momona. And uh, she asked me to, to present the Haumea story to the, the appeal of Ko'olau Aina Momona, including my mo'opuna. So I did that on June 16th, 2017. So you see the story is evolving. Okay. But before I get into the story and all of this, I really would like to do an Oli for Haumea. This is one I composed. I try to always uh, have an English translation when I'm sharing with the public so you can see what I'm chanting. And so I would like to begin this way. Oh, how me and we are, Eva, 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 Hini, no, Ilipo, oh, no, Melanie, no, no, Kahaleo, Papa, Paliku, eh, oh, Eva, Hini, Hadna, we are Mabu, Aki, Hilma, Wakine, Aloha, Aleno, eh. So this is a story of Haumea, of the Paliku lineage, who's also called Papa. And Haumea is the Earth Mother. Now, today we often hear about Papa and Wakea, my kai. Uh, and we hear about Papa Hanao Moku, Papa who gives birth to islands. In the Kumulipa, we learn that Papa Hanao Moku is a daughter of Haumea, and that Haumea is born and reborn in every generation of the females that are born from her, which includes the female Akua. Later on, I could talk about female Akua. But here's something else. For all of you who are uh, Hawaiian, and especially Wahine, Haumea is reborn in every generation of Hawaiian women. So here we are, Haumea. And here's our ancestor. Now, here, this is, the, uh, this is a wonderful photo of um, Kualo and ha uh, Hakipu. This is the fish pond there at Hakipu. But here are the cliffs of Paliku at the top there. And that Paliku is the name of a large family. It's a gene in genealogy. I call it a cosmogonic genealogy. It happens to be my family. And Haumea is part of that Paliku lineage. And we're going to hear her call out to her Paliku ancestors a little bit later in the story. Haumea is also a, an Akua Vahine, a divine female element of earth. She is a Mo'o Vahine, or lizard woman, who can change her kinalao, or body form, from Mo'o to a woman sitting next to a waterfall, pool, fish pond, or the ocean. And the element of Mo'o Vahine is fresh water. The reason I like to point that out is because we often hear stories about a woman who's sitting next to the waterfall or a pool of water or the fish pond. And those are mo'o stories. They're about mo'o. In fact, it's said that when the mo'o vahine is not in the fish pond, the fish don't come anymore. So that's another story we'll get into just now. But I'd like you to know that mo'o vahine, the element, they represent fresh water. And they represent, say, here in He'eia fish pond, which is 88 acres, uh, run by Paipai Ohe'eia, which is a fabulous crew of Hawaiians taking care of the land and the ocean. All of inside of here is mainly freshwater springs that circulate the water. And those freshwater springs represent the Mo'ovahine. Okay, so Haumea is the foremost female Akua of Hawaii. She's born on Oahu. And she becomes the great Akua Vahine of the land where female temples, called Hale or Papa, are built to teach female knowledge to women. So men go to the Luakini, they have the temple, and women have a temple called Hale or Papa. 
women don't go to Luakini and men don't go to Haleopapa. So it's kind of interesting, there's a separation out of knowledge about this. I'd also like to thank uh, Jenny Estrella for this beautiful map of Oahu that she colored in so it makes it easiest for us to see the Moko districts of Oahu. And you can get a copy of this map on abakonahiki.org for free. All things on Abakonahiki are free. Okay. Homea de Poliku lineage is an Akua Vahini of knowledge of childbirth, politics, and war. And in this story, we hear about how she was a great Vahini of, of childbirth in particular, and also of, of war. Yeah. So in, it's a wonderful teaching story. But I'd like you to know that Haumea was worshipped on the cliffs of Nu'umea Lani in the uplands of Kapalama, above Vaulani in Nu'uanu'u'ahu. And I learned about where Nu'umea Lani was from Poi Poi, from the 1906 stories of Poi Poi. And I'd heard about Nu'umea Lani, and it's a many chance, and it's in the Kumulipo, but we didn't know where it was. So it's actually right up here on the cliffs. Uh, this is a photograph I took from the parking lot of the Oahu Country Club. Um, and it was a rainy day, which was kind of, which is kind of wonderful. And we have uh, this part of, this area of, uh, is called Vaulani. It's part of Nu'uwanu, as we see in the next map. So here's Pali Highway going up all the way to the Pali Tunnel. But before you get there, you can take a turn and you go to Ahu Country Club and there's Vaulani. Nu'umealani is on the cliff, but it's actually in Kapalama. It's not in Nu'uwanu, it's on the cliffs, but it's in Kapalama. Kind of, uh, it's actually along the loop trail above Kamehameha Schools. Okay, Haumea's mother is Kahaka Uokoko, the misty rainbow Aku of Wahine Avo'ahu, and her father is Kukulani Ehu, the war Aku of Kauai. I love this photograph that my son Alehu Anthony took because it, it reminds me so much of Kahaka Uokoko, the beautiful rainbow and all of the knowledge that comes from her. And of course, our, the connection between Oahu and Kauai is embedded in this Paliku lineage. Okay. Really the grandmother, yes, you got a question? Yeah, quick question. Um, and I think this is referring to Nuumea Lani and that area. Okay. Um, Roseanne is asking if there are also caves in that area. I don't know about the caves, but I do know that there is still part of the platform of the temple that was built there. Um, so I, I, if anybody goes hiking up in that area, please give us more information. <laughs> Anything else? Um, no, just some uh, comments about being thankful for already what you've shared. So they're excited. Okay. Okay, mahalo, and I'm glad it's just all being uh, recorded so that you guys can go back and look at it and look at all the maps. Again, all of these maps that I show, because I love maps, are on, posted on avakonahiki.org where we have, um, you know, all the Oahu maps mainly, some from Ihau, some from Maui, but mostly, mostly from Oahu. And we have uh, 80 Ahupua'a on Oahu, so we have 80 Ahupua'a maps, and sometimes we have five or six maps for every Ahupua'a. And this was done by my team, the Avakonahiki team. We had a um, federal grant back in 2014, <laughs> a while ago. Yeah. Okay, so we've got her mother, Kahaka Uakoku. The grandmother of Haumea is Kahaula. And she's an Akua Wahine of dreams. She's the mother of Kahaka Uakoku. Now, when I taught this to my grandchildren, I didn't tell them the whole story, but you folks who know my students know that Kahaula is a, is a Kua Vahine of sexual dreams. But my daughter said, Mom, keep it clean. So I didn't tell my grandchildren this. They still don't know it. When my daughter heard that Kahaula was an Akua Vahine of dreams, she drew this picture. And all of the little crosses in the, in the sky, kind of stars, are the dreams of Kahaula. And I didn't tell her that Kahaula was a Mo'o Vahine but that's how she drew her. So every time we have a talk story in my class, they're drawing, and at the end they show me their drawings, and this is what was inspired by the story. I, I um, as all of my students know, I never stop talking about my mo'opuna. I just love them to pieces. <laughs> and I love being a tutu. 
Okay, now, Kahauna is the daughter of Launiha. Everyone say Launiha. Yes, Launiha. She is the Mo'ovahini of Kalihi Valley. And the old name of Kalihi Valley was Kalihilihi o Launiha. So Launiha is a great grandmother of Haumea and is a source of her mana. Notice again that this drawing uh, of a mo'o is the mo'o for Launiha, and that is what Ha'ena decided to draw for us that day. Okay, so now we're kind of getting to the story that Poi Poi tells us in 1906. He says, Wakea of the Ololo lineage is Haumea's Kane, and they live in the mountain of Kilo Hanakalihi. So if we go right back to our map there, Kilohana is up in the section, the northeast section of Kalihi Valley. That's where they're living. And this is a photograph of the Kilohana. It's a dip between two pu'u. This is from the Kaniohe side. It looks the same from the Kalihi side, but it's always harder to get a shot from the Kalihi side because we're in a car on the freeway and <laughs> it's moving too fast. <laughs> Uh, and Alora Estrella drew this beautiful uh, drawing of um, of Haumea and Wakea. And this is the, the girls love to design clothes. This is one of their designs for the dress for Haumea. And then Haena put in the details. So this is a drawing by the both of them from five years ago. I think they're a little shy for me to show it because now they're much older and they draw better. And I said, okay, draw me your picture, son. <laughs> Okay, so then we learn from uh, Poi Poi that Wakea is of the Ololo lineage. But for those of you who have studied more, you know also that Wakea is the sky father and the star constellation Orion. So here's Orion. If you haven't seen it in the sky, there's Orion. The first star in the belt of Orion rises on the equator, which is called in Hawaiian Kapiku o Wakea. And this is a really, really important kauna of the story. They're not just talking about Haumea, a woman, or Wakea, a man. They're talking about how they interact and how these elements interact. So Wakea is not just an Akua sky father. He is also the element of the star constellation called Orion. And at Equinox, or Alopiku or Wakea, Kanehualani, the sun, moves straight across Kilohana, right through there. You're standing in Kanyohe. This is actually the photo was taken from the foot of uh, That's exactly an east-west line from Heiau to Kilohana. And um, what they're seeing then at that time is the sun moving over the first star in the belt of Orion. Okay. So our story goes. Question. Yes, question. Is Haumea's lineage related to the Akua in the Keao Mele Mele Mo'olelo? Uh, the Paliku? Um, I have to think about that. I have to go okay. back and look at Keao Mele Mele. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, no, Mekai. Mekai. There's only one Haumea. There's only one Paliku. So she's in that story. That's her. Mm. That helps. <laughs> okay. So one day, Haumea went to catch crabs and gather limu in Heia. Now, Kilohana is, can you see my cursor as I move it around, Malia? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So Kilohana is right up here uh, in the cliffs of, you know, um, is the Ko'olau, and we're looking from the Kanyui side. And she comes down those cliffs, which are very steep, quite easily. She comes down here to Heia. This is Heia Park, as we know it today. This is an older picture of um, the fish pond. But Poi Poi calls it the Kealohi Lagoon. And so I thought I'd share that with you folks that he's using that terminology. This is the Kealohi Lagoon. And you know, the reason she can climb up and down those cliffs so easily is because she's a mo'o. And mo'o can climb steep, steep cliffs. So there we are. While she's down at the ocean picking crabs and limu, Wakia went to gather mountain food, such as ho'il fern, freshwater shrimp, yams, and mountain bananas. And then Wakia was captured by the guards of Kumuhonua, who was Ali Inui of Oahu, and he was charged for stealing the kapu bananas of Kumuhonua. Now, my granddaughter Haena was upset that anybody should be captured and charged uh, for stealing bananas when the bananas in the mountain grow wild. So every so often we would take a, a road trip 
after we're doing some stuff in class, we get on the car, we go for a road trip. And this one, this place, we went up to the Pali to see all of the Alpua down below the Pali and learn all their names and the boundaries. When we're coming down, we came past this particular grove of uh, banana. And Haina said to me, Tutu, Tutu, look, there's the bananas of Wakia. So, of course, we had to turn around and take a picture. And this is mountain banana, which is not usually planted by anybody. It just grows wild, unless maybe somebody planted it there a long time ago and it's still growing. But Haena's idea was if it's growing wild in the mountains, it shouldn't belong to anybody. So she was quite offended by Kumu Honua in this story. <laughs> she has a strong sense of justice. <laughs> And so the Ali Inui Kumuhonua lived at Apuake Hau in Waikiki. And this is a map of Waikiki from, by Montserrat from uh, 1913. Uh, and here is the Apuake Hau River coming down. The Royal Hawaiian is in Helamoa on one side. And let's see, is it the Outrigger is on the other side? Oh, Sheraton is on the other side. Yeah. You know, I don't know Waikiki that well today. <laughs> I know it better before. <laughs> Uh, here's a little bit ma better map. This is a map from 1893. And uh, we can see in Waikiki all of the old lo'i. These are all palo lo'i. And we see the fish ponds of Waikiki. This is where Fort Dewey is today. And this fish pond on the side is where Alamoana is today. Uh, and the fish ponds we see at Mauka. This is where um, the willows come, was. They filled in the fish ponds. They put in houses. And the, the fish ponds at the top of the map are actually where Puck Sally is today. So um, all of this is a lot of fresh water bubbling out of the ground, hence Waikiki. And here is Apua Kehau. So we're going to hear a lot about Apua Kehau. And I just wanted to show you this river system that we had in Waikiki as late as 1893. Okay. So the guards uh, called Wakea a mu'ai mai'a. And these are the people who silently eat mountain bananas. So mu means to be quiet. I might have to eat banana. And I guess that was a derogatory term for them because that seems to be what it is in the story. And at first they tied his feet and hands, his hands and feet to carry him like a pig on a carrying pole. But he said, guys, what are you doing? Do you want me to go somewhere? I'll just walk with you. So <laughs> then they let him walk down to Pu'ehu Ehu and Waikahalulu which is right up on here is where the stream coming down from the Ula, the one that's called Ball Running Stream at this map, come um, just before School Street. And then they were going to cook him in an emu. Now, this is very strange. We hardly ever hear of any historical tradition of a human sacrifice being cooked in an emu. They would usually be taken to the heiau, they might be knocked on the head, or they might be killed in another manner, but Cooked in the emu? This is the first time I ever heard of this story. But maybe others, other scholars have heard of this, but I never heard of it before. So I was quite surprised. Again, we went on a road trip and we took a modern picture. This is where Waikahalu is today. <laughs> okay. Back in Heia, Haumea has a premonition. Something's wrong. And she hurries home to find that Wakia, she hurries home to Kilohana to find that Wakia has been taken. Oh, okay. So she has to get home. She has to do something about that. Before she left Ke'ia, she made a lepo'o of hohohoe vines, and she hurried home to Kilohana, taking her crabs, her limu, and her fish with her. Now back in Kilohana, in Kalihi, she puts down her ipu of crabs and fish, and she gathers ferns and lehua for herself to wear, because when she's going to go into battle, she needs to be dressed properly. Meanwhile, the crabs and fish escape and go to live in the mountain streams of Kalihiuka, which becomes famous for this wondrous black crabs on the mountain. And that's in the Poi Poi story. So he's telling us that story. You can find black crabs, you know, alami, in the back of Kali. <laughs> so dressed in beautiful lei, Haumea then hurried to Waikahalulu, where she met Kali'u, who's a man of Kapalama. And he was named Kali'u because that was an old name for that area of Waikahalulu. Haumea asked Kali'u to help her make ava. And he has ava, but he told Haumea that the water there was stagnant. So she called upon her Paliku ancestors to move a large rock in the stream in order to let the fresh water flow because it was stopped up by this big rock. 
And here's her chant uh, that she gives. And I, I, it comes out of Poi Poi. I inserted it into my version of, of the story for my Mo'opuna because <clears throat> the children of um, Ko'olau Aina Momona, Olalo Hawaii, so they knew what, what this meant. But I'm translating it for you. In fact, I just finished the translation right before I came online. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that you can know as I'm chanting what it means. Okay, so she does her chant. Then the rock shook, but it didn't get it didn't come this large. And Haumea prayed again. And then the Pohaku moved aside and the water came gushing out and Kali'u was very impressed. Haumea sent Kali'u to the middle of the stream to get the purest water. And then Kali'u named the Ava. Haumea prayed to her ancestors, the Paliku, to help her save Wakea and she offered them Ava. So she calls upon her ancestors to come into their space to move the rock. And now she's going to make Ava an offer to them to help her save Wakea. So really the moral of this part of the story is, you cannot just walk in and say, I'm gonna do it because I'm all that. You know, you have to go through the steps. You have to remember your ancestors and you have to offer those ancestors who are helping you Ava as a, as a whole kupu. Remember, we always have to hold a kupu. Now, I don't have um, this one translated, so I'm not going to, well, I can, I can chant it for you, and those of you who know Hawaii Mekai, and maybe later on I can come back and translate it. <laughs> I didn't translate it for the students, I was just translating the other one for you folks today. But here we go. This is an ava hule of Haumea. So women made ava. And how male makes Ava, and we have chants for Pele and Hiyaka making Ava. This is her chant that she's calling out to the Apia. Heyak Ava, Heyakua, Heyaino, Heyakua, Heyaina, Kinina, Kamamo, Ame, Kalehu, Heyakua, O Kiakua, Polo, O Kini, O Kiakua, Lua, Menehene, Kiakua. Mai kahi kina ake kumohana, mai kala kaua kala kumu, mai kai to olau a kai kona, mai kapa ai luna i pa ai lalo, mai kaho o kuia kahala vai, e hala vai a pau i a kai ki u i a la he ava, he ava nana pono nana heva, he uli pono he uli heva, he ola he make. Ina ki ola o ki akua, o ki ola nui, o ki ola loa ua ki akua, ola kua loa, ola loa noa mama ua noa lele vale. So just for a quick wrap, she's calling upon them to come, her ancestors, the elements to come to be with her, to give her mana. 
And then she sets the sacred, as Kalenu Uhiva has taught us, she sets the sacred spaces from east to west, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, to from Ko'olau direction to Kona direction, from the sky above to the earth below. She is making a space for her mana to be used and for them to give her mana to save Rakhya. Yeah. So she's going to save him. Yeah. And she calls upon all of them from the uh, from the horizon, from all the horizons. You know, here's the Ava. The Ava that is shows you what is right and what is wrong. The Ulipono, the Uliheva, which are actually is a reference to ancient Mo'ovahine of Tahiti. But from them we get Heola. From this they will give life, they will give death. And she's asking for life for this Kanaka. Long life, great life from them, the Akua, for her Ku'alaha. And then she says, Ola Loa No. So she's asking for life for him. It's a request. Okay. But before Haumea went to save Wakia, she told Kali and his people to go up to Kilohana for safekeeping because she knew there was going to be a battle. And she's going to take care of Kali'u and all of his people. So the, all day, I left, and they left her by herself. She alone went to face the guards of, uh, who are about to cook Wakia. So there's the fire burning. Uh, I, I got this off the web. I don't know where this comes from, but I didn't have an emu fire. If somebody has a better emu fire, please send to me. <laughs> Uh, then she asked the guards for permission to kiss Wakia one last time before they cook him in the eel. And Poi Poi says, because she is beautiful and Wakia is handsome, the people and the guards take pity on her and allow her to approach. And as Haumea kisses Wakia, she slaps the large ulu tree to which he is tied and miraculously it opens up. And then they disappear inside, returning to Kilohana Mountain. <laughs> oh, oops. The sacrifice has been has disappeared. <laughs> the guards run to Kumuhonua and Waikiki to tell him that Wake and Haumea have escaped. And Kumuhonua demands that they cut down the ulu tree. But every time they try to cut the tree with their ads, one chip from the tree hits them in the forehead and they die. So Kumuhonua declares war. Huh. You get a bad temper, brother. <laughs> As Kumuhonua prepares his armies for war, Kamoava, a paliku and ololo priest of Kualoa, arrived in Waikiki to offer to be the kahuna of Kumuhonua. But Kumuhonua rejected him. Huh. Before he leaves, Kamoava tells Kumuhonua that Haumea was born at Apua Kehau. This is the first time I ever heard about the birthplace of Haumea. Here. The Mulivai of Puakehau. She was born there. So every time you go to Royal Hawaiian or you go to the Sheraton, take a look around. That's Apuakehau, where Haumea was born. Mm -hmm. And Kamuava tells Kumuhonua, or oh, it should be Kumuhonua, oh, they have a, I'm sorry, <laughs> that Haumea was born in Apuakehau and she's called Hau O Apua. So that's another name, Hau O Apua, because she was born there. Yes, at, at Apua Kehau. Since Kumuhonua rejected him, Kamoawa went to Haumea at Kilohana and chanted to her as a great Akua Vahine. And here is the chant that he does for her. Now, before I get into it, I want you to notice that he calls out to La'i La'i. And La'i La'i, this chant actually is directly from the Kumunipo. It is a chant from the eighth wa referring to La'i La'i as the first divine human that is born and an ancestor of all the Hawaiian people. But what kind of teaches us that La'i La'i is actually Haumea. And um, we get to know that after we start to look at Kumulipo more deeply. But in this chant, he already knows that La'i La'i is Haumea, and that's why he's giving this chant to her. So it goes like this. Ola ila ik moli ik po la iku honu ya o o vala uwe wa kala ni ya wa hine pi ila ni ya pi ila ni no pi ya o ala ni kna hele hele unne he ne he le le ku ka honu a o ka ma ho ya ki yo ili makalolo kupka le 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 pu ik la ni 
Kau kau mea ke aka ula hai hai lonai. Kau kalai he huai i o ua ki no ulu o la ke akua. Wahine akua wakea. Wahine ho o pa ha o ha o makea. Kau wahine no o iliponi loko ilipakalani. No ka au naki kuku ahikanaka. Oye wahine no ho inu ume alani. Aina ke awa inu huai. I ho ko la pahi wala kalau kwa. E wahine pa ha o ha o ale ke ia. Ho o pa ha o ha o ana i kona kino. He kini, he mano, he lau, he lehu, ke kino o ka wahine. Hoi ano hoi ke hoi luna. A ka la a la au a o a o nuu me ala ni no ho mei. Ho o kau hua i laila. Ho o a i ka ho nua. Ho o a i ka ulu o ua ki na ulu o la e. O ko ua lo ha ka ue i ki mei. A o la au ya o e hau me ei. Okay, I'm going to come back to this in a second. But then after the chant, Poi Poi says, Kamoawa was accepted by Haumea. Yeah, that's a nice chant, right? <laughs> and she said to him, Come inside and be welcome, O Kamoawa. You are a kahuna and an, an akilo, an observer, a kilo of the heavens who knows how to capture the land. So she knows that he's going to be the one that teaches them how to win this war because not only is he a kahuna, but he's a kilo of the heavens. He can read the stars. And so with that power, he can help. But he is coming to her, worshiping her as an akua vahine. He calls out to her, lai lai kamole kapo, which is the taproot of the night. It's also a name given to the Southern Cross constellation. He calls out to her as olai kuhonua, which is the um, uh, earthquake. And so she's a female who can quake the earth, of course, because she is the earth. And she, is, I, I, she has the kapu of the vela. She is the vela. So anyone breaks her kapu, that is, a, a, they die by vela, by burning. She has the um, a way, she, uh, she calls, calls out, she sighs, and she calls out to the heavens. She's a woman who can climb into the heavens. And also, she's a woman that climbs up into the aoa lani, ukana hele hele. Now, this aoa seems to be a sacred tree for Haumea. Some of my students have suggested it's, a, it's another name for the sandalwood tree. I don't know the answer. I don't exactly know what the aoa is, but in all the chants where we see aoa, it's referred to as a sacred tree of Haumea, and it grows on the cliffs of the Umea Lini. Okay, so she brings the energy uh, from the sky down into the earth. She uh, has children with ki'i. In the in the eighth wa of the Kumulipu, we hear about that. And then she has the children that Oili Makalolo that appear from the brain. She's a woman who's known that can give birth to the brain. But when you actually look at that part of the Kumulipu, the children that she's giving birth to in the brain are her ancestors, her mother, Kaka Uapopo, her grandmother, Kahaula, her great grandmother, Laumiha. So to me, what that means is she's giving birth to the teachings of her ancestors that are shared in the Hale of Papa. Okay, so let's move along before I'm out of time, oh boy. So, so this is what we learn in the chant, and we learn also that she is a Vahine Aku of Wakea. So she sleeps with Wakea, and he sleeps with her, but she is his Akua Vahine, or Wahine Akua. She's a woman, but she's also an Akua. We're gonna see that later on when Wakia gets stuck in the war. In part two, we'll see how he says to her, aren't you going to help me? And she goes, well, okay, well. Uh, but she's also wahine ho pa ho o pa o ha pa ha o ha o. Kalamai, wahine ho o pa ha o ha o. Of the, of the tremendous kind of puzzling woman who can change her body to many different forms. Mm -hmm. And here, she's a woman of Makia. And I'd like you to know that we learn in the story of Poi Poi Makia is another name for Wakia. Those two names go together. Hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a woman of Iliponi. And Iliponi seems to be a, a name of either a sacred place in Nuumealani or an old name of the Heiau, which is also called Kawaluna. Or I'm not sure, but there's another Heiau in the Marquesas 
in um, Hiba'oa that's called Iipoin, Iipuni. They drop the L's there. And so I just want to say, oh, something interesting. And they have a sacred female birthing stone there too. Okay, she from the cliffs they throw down the fire stones of Nu'ume, I mean the fire uh, brands of Nu'ume Leni, and then this is the land of the Aoa. Okay, puzzling woman. Yes, she is, and she has many different body forms. And she's there in that sacred plant of the Aoa Nu'ume Leni. Uh, and then she's going to give birth there. And many interesting things will come, but one of her, ooh, her, her, her um, body forms is the ulu, the ulu tree we just heard. And so he says, So Kamo Ava says to her, here is my, my, beloved, my love in this chant that I have, have shown to you, and I live because of you, Haumea. Well, that works. He lives because of her. Okay, that's, I would take that kind of kahuna. Yeah, that, that's a good line. Okay. So then she accepts him, and she says, you're the kilo of the land. But here's what's really interesting. All right. Then Kamuava joins with Wakea's kahuna brothers. So Wakea is the Kane of Haumea, but he has brothers, what we learn about in the 14th Wa, the Kumulipo. Um, and they are called Lihaula and Makulukulu Kalani. Now, in the 14th Wa, the Kumulipo, we learn how Wakea is born. He is the star constellation Orion. Lihaula is also Lehu'ula, the um, very bright star in the constellation of Manaya Kalani or Scorpio, and Makulukulu Kalani is Saturn. And in the 14th Wa, then we hear the next child, or the final child to be born from this genealogy, is Makali'i, the Pleiades. So later on, in this whole series, we're in another series we're doing for um, Atua, Polynesian, Ancestor stars and temples. Kalenu Uhiba is going to show us about these kinds of stars. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how those star constellations, Scorpio and Pleiades, are the boundaries of where the sun moves. Anyway, that's, that's another story. I go off, I digress. Kalamai. But they have to join. Kamoaba says, look, in order to plan for defense for the upcoming war with Kumuhunua and Kalihi, you got to build a heiau. Yeah, you got to build a heiau. So the war is not happening right away, I guess, because it's not, you can't make a heia real quickly. <laughs> but Kamo'awa directs Wakia and Lihaula to build a temple of Kavaluna, which means the space above, Kavaluna, on the cliffs of Nu'umea Lani for the worship of Haumea. Here's Kavaluna. Here's where the temple is built. Here's, uh, that is the name Kavaluna, the first Haleopapa. And this is the first time we have a female temple, and it's told in the story. Okay, I'm almost out of time. I only have a couple more slides. Let me just show you. You're fine, you're fine. Okay. Uh, then Kamo'ava instructs Wakia and Lihaula to build a joint temple in the valley below, in Vaulani. And this one's for Wakia. So build, they build the one for Haumea first, and they build another for Wakia. And from this time onwards, Wakia is associated with building temples that give Ali'i the power to rule the people on the land, by allowing the Ali'i to predict the weather and the seasons. Hoi hoi loa, yeah? So here's our map of Nu'uanu. And here's Kavaluna up on the top, and here's Vaulani on the bottom. And according to Poi Poi, the two temples worked with each other. The one above was called Nu'u Ahaumea, the summit of Haumea. And the one below was called Vau Ahaumea, the realm of Haumea. Now, I have never been to see this temple. It's, it's still there, the one down below, in Vaulani, in the, um, uh, it's on the grounds of the, of the uh, Ahu Country Club, where they play golf. But I have a student who went there, and she took pictures. I have to get those pictures of her. She measured it, and it's a Zero North Temple. So uh, later on, we'll be talking about Zero North Temples, which also make me really exciting. So... I want to end up for questions. I have this uh, pipi holo kao means the story will continue. And this is a drawing by my grandson, Lama Kulai. This is the ocean. He was drawing this when I was saying the Haumea story. This is the ocean. And in between are all of the hihi manu swimming in the ocean looking for the next story. Uh -huh. <laughs> but before I uh, go to questions, I forget all about it. If you want to read the story of 
It's called Mo'olelo o Wakea by, by Poi Poi. You go to my uh, website, Avakona Hinki. You're gonna, you're gonna see two screens. You'll click on the expert screen. When you click on the expert screen, it takes you to this. And you can look at land documents and map and research and all of that, or old videos I have from my classes. You'll also see a map of Oahu that uh, Kamehameha Schools done that, did back in 1987, and Puakea Meyer gave me the permission to use it. But at the bottom of the map is where you see where the story of Poi Poi from 1906, May 2nd to June 18th. And um, uh, this is transcribed by Dr. Noi Noi Silva. So if you would like to read it, Makolelo Hawaii, go there, click on, and um, yeah. That's that's uh, kind of the end of my story, and I want to take questions now. Sure. Yeah, mahalo nui. Um, and I love the incorporation of the ki'i from the mo'opuna, and, you know, um, just, yeah, just seeing that come alive in these different ways, I think, is really beautiful. Um, Do I stop sharing my, my screen? No, I leave it on. Sure, so people sure. don't want to see something from me for. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, let me see. I'm checking. You know, there were a lot of comments, and I think people were very intently listening in. Um, there was a question earlier. Um, it was more about the fish pond, and so Justin said, was that fish pond just recently restored, or is that the one you turned to stay on Kamehameha Highway going to Kaneohe? I think it's that's cool. Uh, yes, yes, it's cool. Hey, a fish pond. And uh, for a long time, it was covered over in mangrove. Uh, you know, there's a long bridge that goes behind it. If you're leaving uh, Kanihei Heia and you're going up North Shore, you go along the long bridge. And every time I would drive there with my mama, who was born in 1920, she said, look at all of this rubbish here, referring to the mangrove. She said, when I was a child, you could see all the way to the ocean. This is terrible. How come they're not taking care of this? And she would, she would you know, really look about it. And... <laughs> And I'm sure if she was still alive today, she would love to see how Hi'ile Cavello and the Poi Poi, Poi Poi how they have so cleaned up all the mangrove. But here's something I learned when I was a Molokai. They told me that mangrove loves fresh water. They love the freshwater spring. So wherever you have the tallest mangrove, you have a freshwater spring underneath it. And then you can see how much fresh water is in that whole area. So if you folks are now driving down to that old road, uh, the Long Bridge, and you look and you now can see out to the road, uh, out to the ocean, and you can see all the good work that Hi'ile and her peeps have done, you know, um, just want to say how proud I am of all of them. She called for a thousand people to come to Pani de Puka. There was a hole in the wall, and she called for a thousand people. Two thousand people came. And they fixed that wall in one day that had been broken for, oh, 20 years, 30 or 40 years, something, a long time. It was broken for a long time. So I, I really appreciate what they're doing there. And I, I love to uh, see it. Um, you know, many of you know that I can't walk too well. So I, I use a handicapped scooter. And I can't get down the hillside to the, hill, to the <laughs> fish pond because <laughs> it's too steep. But it's really beautiful. Anybody can go. Um, call them first because, you know, we're on lockdown still yet. But call them first and then if you can, go down and see the fish pond and help, uh, you know, give your labor there. Uh, the, so the photograph I showed is what they have now online. And it shows it all cleaned up with all the wall repaired and the, and the um, uh, mangrove all taken out. And it's just beautiful. And it's got all the fish there. But see, in the story, that's where Haumea goes down to collect crabs and fish and limu from that area. It's as if Haumea Mo'ovahine living in the mountain comes to visit Mehe Anu, the Mo'ovahine of the pond, and she's collecting. Now, it doesn't say that in the story, but it's kind of the karma of it, you know? So, um, yeah, that's good fun. Very good fun. Uh, um, you know, there's a, a Ohana from Tahiti that was joining in. Tam Tam S Y K says, watching my Tahiti Mai Yorana. Aloha, mahalo nui loa, maururu for sharing knowledge. Oh, my mahalo. We're soon going to have a, a, a series starting on June 17th here on uh, our channel here, our Le Anui Nui. And um, soon we'll have a flyer out about that as soon as I get the right link. <laughs> but uh, for everybody in Tahiti, spread the word. 
where it's going to be in English and in French. So tell your cousins who don't speak English, they can get on and watch too. We'll be doing ancestral knowledge from Hawaii, Tahiti, Aotearoa, Tonga, uh, where else am I going? Oh, uh, Cook Islands, Rarotonga, um, Tuamotus, Marquesas, and Rapa Nui. So we'll be looking at the ancestor stories about creating the world and about stars that we use for the land and for navigation, about temples. Then we'll start looking at various elements, of Atua elements of different islands that are important. And uh, we'll look at how we're related because we really are. The Haitians are our cousins, as, as are the Maori and the Tongans, etc. You know, everybody. So uh, I'm kind of excited about that. So folks down in Tahiti, please spread the word. Hironui Abui is going to be our translator. So everything I say in English or any of us say in English, she'll translate to French. And then um, there'll be some Tahitians who will be presenting in French and he'll be translating to English for all of us who don't speak French. And the challenge, of course, is for all of us to be able to speak Maka Olelo Vai Maka Olelo Tahiti. Right, right, right. But that's coming along. We're going to oh, start big stuff. Yeah, we're excited. Um, we're excited to be able to um, kako'o the Gladys Grant and Kamakaku Kalani for getting um, this new webinar series and again partnering with everyone um, to bring all of these mo'olelo from different parts of, of our pakipika um, and sharing it with everyone. So yeah, we're really excited about that and what, what, what can we expect on uh, on Thursday, because we're going to have part two, right, of, of our um, right. Of our Olelo. Okay, on part two, well, um, they build the temple for the war, and then the war begins. And right in the middle of the war, Haumea gets a call to go to Kailua to help take care of Olopana's daughter, Muleula, who is giving birth. And she cannot give birth, and they're really worried she's going to die. So she has to leave war because war is not that important. Birth is more important. And she goes there and we're going to learn all the la'o that she uses to, for, for Mule Ula to give birth and what the baby is and who the baby is. And after all that's finished, um, what she does say to Olapana is, look, I want to hanai this child. And I want to raise the child. After the baby is weaned, I want to raise this child with all the knowledge that I have and I'm going to give to this child. And he agrees because, you know, she's got the medicine to take care of his daughter. So uh, then she says, okay, I've done that. Okay, let's go back. And she goes back to Wakea. And he says to her, I need your help. Aren't you going to help me? You're the Aku of Ahine. And she goes, oh, do you want me to help you? Okay, do what I say. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then we'll see what comes next and how, you know, she helps them. And the great adventures they have in the next part in this battle with Kumu Hunua. Yeah, that's awesome. on Thursday. So yeah, we'll see you so, guys then. yeah, everyone's saying, I can't wait for part two. Mahalo. <laughs> and if you, have, you folks have other questions you want to email to me, lilikala at hawaii.edu, be glad to answer questions. Or if you want me to answer them online, bring them forward next time on Thursday and put them into the chat so Malia can ask the questions. And maybe it's easier to answer the questions with the, with the slideshow so you can see, um, you know, where it happened and when it happened. I'm a great believer in maps. I love maps. And I love uh, visuals. I think they're equally as important as the words. So I love PowerPoint and, you know, doing this kind of thing is kind of fun. But all, all of you, thank you so much for coming. And yep. um, in this hard time where we're worried about diseases and where we've got wonderful demonstrations all across the nation and the world to make a change for good. I want to just say, please be careful. Please wear your masks. And um, just stay, if you're in a, a protest march, I understand, because you know, I used to lead them all the time. But don't get sick. And so stay kind of far apart and wear that mask. We're not out of the woods yet in Hawaii. You know, we've seen an uptick, uptick. And I just want all of us to be healthy and whole. And we have some big issues to cover in the future with the rising of the oceans and climate change. So we need to learn that wisdom of the ancestors in all of our areas. Because indigenous peoples everywhere in the world really knew how to take care of their own land base, their own ocean. So that's what we do at Kamakakuokalani. We look at ancestral knowledge and we bring it forward to the future. 
to the president and look at the future. And I, I want to um, thank you, Malia. Thank you so much for putting this on. And thanks to Kanai Okana, to Kehel Abad and Ganzo and everybody who's on the team. Thank you so much because really um, the greatest gift any of us can give to our descendants is an honor to our ancestors. So mahalo nui la. Mahalo nui, yeah. I think those are, um, you know, some really great last words. And, you know, again, we're really excited to have you and sharing this mo'olelo of haumea. Um, I see, I'm seeing a comment here that I'm just reflecting on really quick. When is the next time you all are going Oh, she's start talking specifically to someone on, on Facebook. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, thank you again. And we look forward to part two. So everyone, you know, come back. For those that are here on our live session, come back this Thursday. Um, we'll be hearing the continuation of our mo'olelo. And um, as we wrap it up here, we humbly ask all of you um, to go on to our um, survey and you know a great recommendation that um, Lily Kala gave me is hey it's not like clickable so can you put it in the in the chat um, and so I'm actually I just added it on to the zoom chat kanayokana.net slash survey I hope that makes it a little easier for you and maybe if our kanayokana team can put it on our Facebook chat um, so that people can easily click on the survey link and it takes a few minutes there's about six or seven questions there it allows us to you know you can give us feedback and let us know how we can serve you better if you like this kind of programming if it's bringing value into your homes to your ohana um, you know, we welcome all of your feedback. So yeah, please um, take a few minutes today um, when you're done here and share with us your mana'o on, um, on what you've been experiencing. As always, we're, uh, you know, just excited about the programming that's to come. And you can always find out what's coming up on our schedule by going to kanayokana.net slash lay. And, um, you know, this, this week, so today and Thursday, Lili Kala is here sharing us the Mo'olelo o Haumea. And then on Friday, Hailama Farden will be doing also a two-part session. So Friday, he'll be starting his conversation about Hawaiian name giving. And then he'll continue it next week, Tuesday. So, you know, there's, um, he told me, I need two sessions too, or else I'm going to be doing Kepa Kepa throughout, throughout my presentation. <laughs> so we invite you to come back. Um, and then, of course, our Aikole sessions are on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, and they're held all Maka'olelo Hawaii. Um, so please come back and listen in and join our host, Ekela Kani Aupi Okrozier, who will be... Um, having these ono kole kole sessions with our, our Olalo Hawaii friends and our ohana. So please consider, uh, yeah, go check out our, our listing and our schedule. As always, a big mahalo nui to all of you for joining us. And stay connected with us. You know, you can follow us on our social media platforms for Kanayo Kana as well as Hawaii Nui Akea. We have a Facebook page as well as our Instagram. And you can find out more information about our upcoming webinar series that we're gonna get started um, very soon. Um, and you know, you'll be able to get all of that, those updates on our, again, Hawaii Nui Akea Facebook page. So please stay connected with us. We hope you guys have a beautiful day today, wherever you're joining us from here in Hawaii, our Pico Okahonua. Um, and to all of you that are joining from outside of Hawaii as well, ke aloha nui ya oko pakahi. Aloha. Aloha.